Hey, good morning again, Tallgrass Church. Loving the weather, loving being with you all on Longs Park. This is the 12th week we're here. So we'll be here about 15 total weeks before we head into Boys and Girls Club. Looking forward to that. Keep your camp chairs close by because we are not buying a bunch of chairs and setting up and tearing down. You're going to keep bringing your chair, so keep that handy. It's going to be very useful. I'm going to invite my wife, Maris, on up here, as well as the Geldart family and the Johnson family, the, the kids and the parents, so Nick and Lizzie and Dave and Jen and the kids. We are going to celebrate these two beautiful new babies. It's always funny when you say new baby. It's a little redundant. Every baby is brand new. Uh, so Archer Wayne Johnson, whom you'll see here at momentarily, if, you, if the families can stand in between these two posts, if possible, Maybe right up. Um, uh, or, you know, we'll try to maintain as much physical distancing between the family units as possible. Archer Wayne Johnson, born on May 12th this year to Nick and Lizzie, proud brother and sister, Theo and Nora, we're super excited to pray over this family and and welcome this baby um, into the church family, Tallgrass family. And sadly, we just sang about how amazing it is to hold a newborn baby, but because of COVID, uh, I'm not, I'm not going to hold these babies uh, right now. We're going we're gonna to maintain that physical distancing. Um, and then Annalise Marie Geldart, born to Dave and Jen Geldart on June 22nd, 2020, and proud brothers Benji and Sammy. And Jack, of course, welcoming in little Annie. So we're going to pray over Archie and Annie. Now, one thing that we know is true of these, these two beautiful human beings who are very young is that they need connection. They need community. Foundational to the way that they've been shaped and crafted by God himself is that they cannot and should not go through life isolated and alone. So, in fact, in Genesis 2.18... Uh, the, the Lord God said, after he created all this amazing stuff and said, this is good, this is good, this is good, humanity is very good, he found something that was not good in his creation. He said, it is not good that the man should be alone. And so he created a helper for him, his wife. And then through that, through God's provision of a wife for Adam, that was just the beginning of the relational web of connection that God weaves to cover the whole globe of which we all get to be a part because we're here together wel welcoming in these children. So God has been working to reweave this relational web of connection ever since that first breach of connection when Adam and Eve rebelled against him. So we want our church to be a relational web of connection built upon the foundation of Christ and his shed blood on the cross into which Annie and Archie and also, there's a couple other babies already born that we need to celebrate eventually. Daniel James Schmitz, and newest to the family, Cain Lawrence Beckman, born just this week. So that these children can be born into this space of connection where they can be nourished and connected to Christ and to church community to grow up to be the sons and daughters of the King that they were intended to be. So we all have an important role to play in providing that relational connectivity for these, these two to be um, born into and grow up to health. Did you have something you wanted to read? Yeah. I found it. Is this on? No, but it can. Oh, yeah, need, yeah, it'll need to be. Testing, testing. Good? Um, I found a really cool prayer online that I thought I'd pray over these sweet babes. So, Father, I praise you for new life newborns, and growing families, for the anticipation of a life forever changed for first parents and the overwhelming joy of repeated blessing for growing families. Whether the first or multiple child, birth carries a set of worries that only the power of the Holy Spirit can quench. Today, we praise you for that Holy Spirit's power and the sacrificial death of your son, Jesus, to provide it. Father, you sent your own son to earth in a womb, he was born as vulnerable as all babies are. When we are tempted to think that the world can never be safe enough for your children to grow up in, remind us of your omnipotent control and overwhelmingly powerful love for each one of us. When we look at our newborn babies, help us to recognize them as yours and know undoubtedly that your plan for their lives is good. Amen. Father, I, th I thank you for Archie and for Annie. I pray that they 
as they are born into this fallen, depraved world, uh, that they over time will come to know the extent of your love for them, that you would um, draw them to yourself through your son, Jesus Christ, that, that Archie would know that he is a, a son of God, he is a younger brother to Jesus Christ, your one and only son, and that Annie would know she is a precious daughter of the Most High, uh, that you would root their identities firmly in the rock that is Christ. I pray for Dave and Jen and the boys and Nick and Lizzie and uh, um, Nora and Theo, that they will um, take seriously this responsibility um, to raise um, this son and daughter, this brother and sister, to know Christ and to walk in His ways. I pray for our church that we would take seriously our role um, in, in helping invest in one another's kids and that we would um, really love these kids really, really well. I thank you so much for how you've grown our church through so many children. Thank you for the kids we have this morning. I pray for a wonderful time of connection this morning for kids, for adults alike. We love you so much. It's in your, your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, give it up for these families. They've, they've worked hard and they've grown the church. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Thanks. Oh, I got a gift for you guys. So. Eventually, um, I'm sure he'll enjoy that. Eventually, Annie will like it. In the meantime, the boys will love it.